Come rain, come sunshine Switch my heart and do you, you will find It's love for you All I got is love for you You know, I genuinely think prayer is the universally accepted yet universally misunderstood form of entry into the spirit realm and everyone knows it regardless of what religion, tribe, nation, tongue everyone knows that at some point we'll be brought to our knees by life great, small, young, old there's something that always brings us to our knees we have different understandings of what prayer is, but we all somehow find ourselves on our knees. They may not tell it to you, they may hide it from you, but somehow <laughs> our heart always comes back to that place where we are humbled. All right, so this might be the most different teaching on prayer or <laughs> the most different insight on prayer that you might have heard in a while. Get ready, I might challenge your theology and beliefs, but get ready. You're welcome to the show. If you're not subscribed, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share. The show is available Mondays, Wednesdays, and Fridays, 15 hours Central African time. You can catch the show right here on YouTube, and you can listen to the podcast on Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts, and Spotify. Mondays are for political discussions. Uh, we have guests sometimes. Sometimes I do uh, solo episodes on Mondays. Uh, Wednesdays are for rebuttals. We just had a rebuttal two days ago on whether Christians should eat pork. I was in the studio with Suilanji. It was fun. We broke down a few scriptures and we had a lot of response on that particular one on our social media, particularly Facebook. And people had a lot to say, even those that didn't watch had something to say. By the way, do remember or check out our segment of Empty Teens Make the Loudest Noise if you've been privy to that segment. Uh, we've aired the first one on one of our Monday shows. Uh, we'll be doing one this coming week. Empty teens make the loudest noise. We never know. You might qualify for that one. Yeah, so you're welcome to the show once again. If you're not subscribed, please do do that. Hit that bell and share this content with other people because we want what we are saying here to be heard by many other people. Uh, the truth is that some things are just not practiced because they have not been heard. Um, similarly, the Bible says, some of you do not receive what you desire because you do not ask. Whoever asks, receives. Whoever knocks, the door is open. And whoever seeks, finds. But you must do it diligently. So yeah, I am glad to welcome you to the show. I'm here alone today and we're discussing prayer and how it's a portal into the realm of the spirit. Now, in order for you to understand what I'm saying, you may be listening to something like this for the very first time. You may not even be a Christian. You may be a Christian. You may be one who has a prayer life, but you've not seen much result in that regard. Uh, I'll tell you why. It's because maybe you do it without understanding. Everything spiritual in this life must be done with understanding. Once it's done with understanding, it produces a result. If it's not done with understanding, it will either not produce a result or produce a wrong result. All right, so Hebrews 11 verse 3. By faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that the things which are seen were not made of things which are visible. So the first place to begin when you're understanding prayer is to understand that there are two different realms of existence. The realm we are in that we can see, touch, feel, smell, taste, uh, which we call the natural realm. It's natural to us. It may not be natural to angels, but it's natural to us, human beings. So the natural realm or the physical realm, the body realm, the fleshly realm uh, that you and I experience, which many people only know as the only realm to exist. This natural realm came out from the spirit realm. So the spiritual realm is the source and it produced what we see today. So the Bible here is saying that by faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, okay? So words, the word of God produced the worlds we see. Now, where was God? If this realm that we see today 
was produced by the word of God, then where was God as he spoke it into existence? He was in another realm, the real realm, the spirit, the source realm, the realm where God is. He spoke and it framed the world we're in today. Look at so, that. If then there are two realms, the realm from where we came and the world and the realm where we are, then there must be a way to ac access that realm. Because in that realm, not only is God in that realm, we have angels, we have the, it's way more populated than this realm. Okay. Uh, for some of you, the only thing you think about when you think of the spirit realm is demons. But it's more than that. Because even demons themselves have a point where they came into the picture. But the one that's eternal in this realm, no beginning, no end, is God. So once we understand that the realm of the spirit produced the natural realm, then we have a good place to start with prayer. Because we understand that when we get into a place of prayer, we are contacting the other realm. We are influencing things here by contacting the other realm. Okay, witches, wizards, and satanists understand these things, and so they manipulate them in order to manipulate those that don't understand. And some people understand these small secrets, so they look like they're superhuman because they're able to produce things uh, and do one or, one or two things. But it's really that simple. It's hidden in plain sight that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which are seen were made by things which are not Visible. Now, let me show you another direction to look in order to understand this thing called prayer, the communion. So we have established that there are two realms, the spirit realm and the natural realm. The spirit realm produced the natural realm. And when people die and their bodies go to the grave, their spirit lives on in the other realm. Okay. Now, another place to look, another direction to look is in the garden. Genesis chapter 2, verse 8 to 9. The Lord God planted a garden eastward in Eden, and there he put the man whom he had formed. And out of the ground, the Lord made every tree grow that is pleasant to the sight and good for food. The tree of life was also in the midst of the garden and the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, <laughs> for a lot of people, their understanding of the garden is that it was the garden of Eden, meaning that the garden was called Eden. But can you observe something that the Bible says God planted a garden in Eden, in the east, right? So if God planted the garden eastward in Eden, it means the garden wasn't called Eden. The garden was planted inside Eden. Now, many people will tell you that that place can't be located anymore and no one knows where Eden was. But I'll tell you something. Eden was a, an environment that God had created because God said in Genesis 1 verse 26, let us make man in our own image and likeness and let them have dominion over the earth, right? So if God said this, it means the earth that he made was given to us to have dominion. And even him being a spirit to have his work performed in this realm would have to be under the permission of man. But he had created a space, a, sec a secluded space, an environment where he planted a garden and placed man there. Because this garden was the place where God could come and commune with man, like a friend communes with the other, right? And what happened in the garden is that as time went by, Adam began to learn more about the earth and about his assignment. Because the garden is a place of assignment. The garden is an environment in which talents and assignments are given. So God planted a garden, and in the garden he put man, and in the garden he gave man an assignment because the garden is a place of assignment. And you realize that it's only when man was in the garden that, uh, and he began to do his assignment, and he named the animals, and he began to tend the garden, that God gave him a help meet. Okay, if you watched um, my last Bible talks, I talked about how the help meet is the help qualified for man to fulfill his assignment. And they say, in the same way, we've been given a help qualified who is the Holy Spirit now to help us fulfill on our assignment. But we must have one already. And Jesus many times talked about the talents and how there was giving of jobs and giving of assignments. And this is what was happening in the garden. Man had an assignment. 
Okay, so he had to fulfill an assignment, and this is what the environment um, supported. Now, after that man sinned, he was kicked out of this environment, and man was still in the world, but he no longer had that direct access to God. They could not commune anymore, but God made a plan. Let me show you. John 15, verse 1 to 3. I am the true vine, and my father is a vine dresser. I am the true vine, and my father is a vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. You are already clean because of the word which I have spoken to you. So Jesus here likens himself to a tree, or you could say a garden. He says, I am the living vine. Some versions will say, I'm the living vine. Some versions will say, I am the true vine. Some versions go as far as saying, I'm the living God, the one true vine. So Jesus likens himself to a vine. Now, remember, when, God, when um, Adam was in the garden uh, with Eve, the garden was surrounded by trees. And in the middle of the garden was a tree called the tree of life. And Jesus says he is the living vine. And remember, he says, I came not, to, not that you may die, but that you may have life and have it more abundantly. And he says, he that believes in me will never die. And on the last day, I shall raise him. So Jesus likens himself to a tree and he likens himself to a life giver. As a matter of fact, the Bible calls him the life giving spirit. The Bible says the first Adam was made a living soul and the second Adam was made a life giving spirit. Now, Jesus likens himself to the environment in which Adam was placed. Because we must understand that Jesus is the second Adam, okay? He came to accomplish an assignment that Adam uh, did not uh, successful, successfully accomplish. By the way, please do subscribe, hit the notification bell, and share. So, Jesus likens himself to this environment uh, where Adam was Eden. And he says, I am that environment where branches are given assignments. And they bear fruit. To bear fruit is to produce, to be productive, to be able to do what God has commissioned you to do, is to be fruitful. Okay? And every branch that does not bear fruit, the vine dresser. The vine dresser is a farmer. And remember, Jesus always gave parables about the farmer who sowed good seed. So the father is the farmer and Jesus is the garden and we are the branches. Now, I want you to know something. Branches don't only grow from a tree. Some branches grow from the root. When you read the Bible in the book of Isaiah, it says, and the branch shall grow from the root of Jesse. Okay. And that's why the Bible says we are like trees planted by the side of the river whose leaves never wither. That's in the book of Psalms. Now, if Jesus likened himself to this environment, it means that prayer becomes interesting because he said, you ask anything you want in my name, but you will not ask it to me, you ask it to the Father. So the Father, who is the farmer, wants you to get into the environment called Jesus because Jesus is the new Eden. Okay? So, he wants us to get into the environment called Jesus, and there he will give us assignments. He'll plant us into the vine. When, he, when we are plugged into the vine, we must produce fruit. So prayer, when you begin to view prayer as this place that gets you back into Eden. Oh, I know I'm challenging a lot of you. <laughs> when you begin to view prayer as that place that gets you back into Eden, then you will know how to respond to God's nudgings and promptings and his voice and his words because you understand that prayer is that place that we commune with God as Adam communed with, with God in the garden. Now, let me show you one more uh, scripture where Jesus talks about being the door. John chapter 10, verse 79 then Jesus said to them again, most assuredly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who ever came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not hear them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. Now, <laughs> in closing, Jesus describes himself as the door. What is he a door to? Jesus is the legitimate 
entrance into the realm of the spirit to get all those things that we need. Remember the Bible and the book of Ephesians say God has blessed us with all spiritual blessings in heavenly places. Whatever we need is already available in the realm of the spirit. Your spirit man is a rich man in the realm where God exists. But what you need to do is to bring that into the natural realm. And one way we do that is by contacting the spirit realm through prayer. And the door is Jesus. So we need to understand exactly what the name of Jesus means legally to us. Because the name of Jesus gives us access into this realm where God once walked with man. And once we get into that realm, God gives us assignments and we must be fruitful. So prayer is a portal into the realm of the spirit. And the access code is the name of Jesus. If you have been uh, enlightened by this, please leave your comments. Let me know what you think. For now, I will be going. <laughs> Bye-bye. Hey, like what you see? I know you do. Hit the button below to subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. Ciao.